Hi everyone, Jordan from Entech here. Today, we're moving away from our normal set and out to the backyard. Today is the first episode of our DOTS lockdown project. All right, so we've been handed a few strings of our smart pixel dots and we've been asked to create an outdoor demo for you to show off the capabilities as well as some mapping and layout strategies to get the most out of your lights. In this episode today, we'll cover the planning process that we've gone through as well as walk you through some of the constraints that we've faced when dealing with a project like this. But first, let's take a look at the resources that we have on offer. We've been given a total of 160 dots made up of eight strings of 20. We have two power supplies that can run four strings each at full power. We have our trusty Pixel Octo and plenty of cabling and connectors as well as mounting options to give us flexibility. So let's have a look at where we'd like to set up. As the nights have been getting longer and warmer here in Australia and we've been asked to stay at home, we've found ourselves drawn to spending time outside with our housemates and families. We've had a look at our backyard area and we're drawn to this particular space. A few camp chairs, some music and some dynamic light would really make this space more inviting for some impromptu drinks and nibbles in the late afternoon. Behind this covering of vines is a chain link fence which will allow us to mount to our dots using the wings that are part of the one piece machine aluminium body which is a standout feature of these lights. These vines also have waxy leaves which will help reflect a little bit of the light and help show off the dots at night which is when we'd like to use them the most. Now, this fence space here is massive, 16 metres by 3 metres to be exact. Now, because we have such a large area to work with, it's important that we trial a few layouts, mappings and settings before committing to a setup that we'd like to use. In this scenario, we have much more width than height to cover. So, we've decided we'll stay away from multiple power injections and instead, we'll utilise the two data outputs of the Octo with our two power supplies to power and provide data for two separate four string setups. We've been playing with a few different layouts recently. Let's head back inside and take a look at them and we'll explain the advantages and drawbacks of each. Here's our first layout we call Spread Straight. We have a pitch of 125 millimeters between dots along the X and Y axis. This is a nice simple pattern that will take up as much of our massive fence area as possible. It's simple to map and simple to set up. However, it's a little too spread out for what we want and we feel it lacks impact and the semi-video wall effect which is complemented with Elm's animated effects and media. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have tight staggered. This would allow us to have the highest resolution of pixel output over a given space and it results in a really intense concentrated light source. Using a staggered setup also gives us a sort of fake 40 pixel resolution in the x-axis, which works really nice with Elm's aforementioned animations that we'd like to take advantage of. However, as we alluded to before, we have a massive fence space to cover. And while we feel that the dot animation in this layout would work really nicely with Elm's animation, the massive space we need to cover means the high total output of the dots and it will look insignificant in relation to the space we'd like to cover. Our next option we explored is somewhat of a hybrid between our spread straight and tight staggered setups. We call this spread staggered, and it gives us a pitch of 125 millimeters between dots in the x-axis and 125 millimeters between every second string of dots in the y-axis. And it gives us approximately 100 millimeters diagonally between each dot. This gives us a combination of the desired effects from the previous options. All the dots are nice and spread out evenly so that the light isn't too concentrated and we also take advantage of the 40 pixel x-axis resolution trick that comes with the staggered profile. Now we can really see Elm's animated patterns shine. Next, we'll need to get our second set of strings set up and some test patterns run through them to make sure everything is working properly. We'll show you our Elm mapping and our Octo settings in just a moment. Here's our wiring diagram if you're following along. What you see before you is our final layout in action on the floor. We've done our trials in this fashion as it would be quite time consuming to try our layouts on the garden wall itself. It's also worth noting that mounting the dots over the vines will make it difficult to get them to line up straight as we have them here. We'll be taking this into consideration during our setup in our next episode. Now that we've got our layout sorted, we'll be heading over to Elm to map our dots. Now it's worth noting here that we're only going to be mapping out one set of four strings of dots rather than all eight strings. 
What we'll be doing instead is we'll be taking advantage of our Octo's dual output design, which will allow us to map the same universe on both outputs. I'll open up Elm and set my resolution to the default 720p. Next I'll set up four strings of 20 dots and I'll make sure I map them in RGB 16 mode. Next, I'll link them up in a snake format which is representative of the way we'll be daisy chaining them in real life. I'll also make sure I set my stabilizer to somewhere around five and six. This will average out the pixel information from my stage going into each dot. Next, I'm gonna organize the media I want to play over the dots before mapping them further. I have a combination of media and colors I like to work with to create a really nice sound reactive pattern. We already have the Topologica media effect added by default, so all I need to do is add the FFT color effect to a free media slot. Next, for my colors. I'll set both my media to grayscale. For Topologica, I set my red to 25, green to zero, and blue to 255. Then for my FFT media, I set my color to 255 in the red channel and zero for blue and green. During this time, I also make sure my audio input is correct. I know that Elm's default audio source is a loopback from the internal sound card output. This means that Elm will respond to whatever I'm playing from my laptop. Now I'll start playing my music from my media player of choice. I'll set the speed to about five times. Next, I'll set my crossfader to somewhere in the middle. Now it's time to move back to my stage to map my dots. So, on this stage you'll see my desired media output for this project. It's worth noting that this media and the settings setup that I've shown you up until now is just a guide for replicating the same output as what I have here. That being said, it's good to demonstrate some of the deeper features Elm has to offer to give you some creative inspiration for your own installation. All right, so you will note that there is this active portion of our stage here, sort of in the middle and a bit to the right. With the FFT color media type, the left side represents the lower frequencies, and as we move to the right, the represented frequency increases. I found that there isn't a lot of useful activity over in this sub bass region here that I want to include. So with this in mind, I'm gonna select my four strings on the right and size them together as a box. I found that a width between 940 and 950 and a height between 150 and 160 works best. We can then drag this box over to our desired media area on our stage. Next, we want to take every second string and stagger it in a way that makes the most of our real life staggered layout. What we want to do first is to take the width value of our box and divide it by the number of dots we have going across, so 20. Then we divide that number by two, and this gives our staggered offset. Now we'll select the second and fourth string, and we'll shift these strings across to the right by our staggered offset number. Now that we have a mapping pattern that's similar to our real life layout, we'll need to rotate our mapping by 180 degrees as our strings will start from the bottom and snake their way up in our actual installation. Finally, we'll select all of our strings, right click on the selection and bundle them together. Next thing I wanna do is set my pixel frames per second to 60 to give us nice smooth animations. Now it's time to move over to our Octo settings page. For this demo, we'll only be going over the settings that pertain to the mapping portion of this project. We have a number of videos relating to sending data from a computer running Elm to our Pixel Octo, so be sure to have a look at those if you're unsure about how to do that. For today's project, we'll simply be making sure that our protocol is 16-bit Smart Pixel RGB and that our first universe for outputs 1 and 2 is set to universe 0. That's it for the first part of our Smart Pixel Dot Lockdown project. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you think there's something that we missed or you've got any questions about our project today. Don't forget to check out our social media channels and stay tuned for more dots, the second part of our lockdown project and for more helpful and tech tips.